two trains, two chapters to tell. One runs hot and fast. The other lumbers slow. Cold cast in Wilford's iron grip. An armored tortoise plodding after a hare. Several months after Melanie's presumed death, Wilford has now taken full control of Big Alice and has imposed a tyrannical rule upon everyone aboard. Despite this, the conditions of the train have progressively gotten worse, meaning that there's little power available. In Layton's place, Ruth and Pike look after the resistance and try to keep their hope in the pirate train's return, all while Javi is revealed to be still alive. Within North Korea, the pirate train makes a stop in a warm location. That's evident of the Earth's returning warmth. While outside, Ben accidentally falls into a nuclear power plant, causing Leighton and Josie to come to his aid. While on their mission, Josie expresses doubts about Melanie's claims, and she shares a kiss with Leighton. Worried about the train melting down, Alex starts the train back up again. Back on Big Alice, Ruth and Pike flee from Wilford's forces after being located, and Audrey tries to tempt Alex into joining forces with him. Leighton manages to save Ben, but he also comes across a mysterious stranger and passes out from a lack of oxygen. In his sleep, he is given a strange vision of a large tree in Africa before waking up and returning to the train. Determined to stop the resistance, Wilford devises a scheme to use an electromagnetic pulse as a special weapon, which Ruth warns Pike about. On the pirate train, Leighton discovers that the stranger from before is named Asha, and it is soon revealed that she was once part of a group of Korean scientists who took refuge in the power plant and died from the radiation. From performing some research, he also finds out that the tree from his dream is a dragon blood tree, and that it grows within the Horn of Africa. On the night of Osweiler and Lila's wedding, Ruth and the Resistance manage to throw the pulse off the train and alert Leighton to their location, just before Wilford can get violent. Snowpiercer arrives just in time. After a long struggle between Wilford and the Resistance, Pike and Ruth set off fireworks in order to signal for help. Along with Javi and Josie, Leighton is able to get aboard Big Alice and force Wilford into surrendering. With Wilford now overthrown, Snowpiercer and Big Alice can now merge back together, with Lila murdering Kevin. Audrey being sent off to third class and Leighton resuming his position as leader. Wanting to take the train to the Horn of Africa, Leighton sets up a voting among the passengers over whether they should travel there or not. The vote is quickly swung in their favor when Asha is forced into lying about being from New Eden, the beautiful place full of life and green plants. While en route to the Horn of Africa, Alex and Ben come across three abandoned cars and must go to disconnect them from Big Alice. Inside the cars are the dead victims Wilford killed in order to support the essential personnel. Amongst many of the passengers, troubling hallucinations begin to appear and remind them of unpleasant memories, with Alex and Wilford experiencing visions of Melanie speaking to them, Javi being haunted by the image of Wilford's dog and Asha reliving the blood-soaked trauma of her past. Leighton soon finds out that Wilford has performed gene experiments on his unborn daughter, but later comes to realize that he did it with Zara's consent, and it was done to strengthen her health. As the carriages start to malfunction, Leighton brings Wilford in for his assistance, which enrages Roach. Furiously, he attacks Wilford and strikes a needle through his heart for the fact that his wife didn't survive the stasis in the drawers. Leighton nearly gives up, but Alex is led by her visions of Melanie and finds a way to disconnect the cars. With Ruth, Pike addresses his concerns about Leighton's leadership and expresses an idea to form a revolt against him. Ruth dismisses this notion, believing that she has plenty of trust in Leighton. Just as Zara goes into labor with Leighton's daughter, the name tree created for the newborn is set on fire and is suspected by Bess to be an attempted terrorist attack. 
Amongst her findings with Leighton, they find out that much of the ethanol has been taken, indicating that it was used for the fire. Later, Josie discusses her immunity to pain due to Wilford's gene therapy, and Ben shares his feelings about Melanie. The pair start to bond together as Ben teaches her how to manage Snowpiercer, and they later even have sex. Suddenly, another fire is started within the train and causes an explosion that nearly kills Leighton. Fortunately, he survives and returns to aid Zara with her health difficulties after the birth. To find the culprit of the terrorist attacks, Bess looks into any clues she can find. Her search eventually brings her to lights and her notes. Bess deduces that the lights must have been used for the creation of a bomb and reports this information to Leighton. From this, Leighton realizes that Pike, who is critical of Leighton's leadership, is the one who set the fires and the two engage in a chase. While on the run, Pike runs into Asha, who lets it out that New Eden was a lie all along. When the chase comes to an end, Leighton tries to resolve the conflict peacefully and discusses Pike's issues with him. To make up for the losses in the tale, he offers him a chance to be the godfather of his new daughter, Liana. Pike refuses and challenges him to a fight with the threat of revealing his lie about New Eden. The fight then results with Pike being killed, making Leighton the victor. In a strange dream caused by the head injury, Leighton is abducted by two strange men and soon saved by Ruth, Javi, and Wilford. He is then told by Till that he's secretly dying and must find the tail boss at the end of the train. She warns him that it'll be harder to leave this world the longer he stays and thus cuts his arm as a reminder. Visions of Wilford and Pike also begin to appear, who urge him to make up for the deaths of the tail passengers. In the real world, Audrey comes across Leighton's body and whispers that he must remember himself. Once he solves a riddle given to him by the train's cartographer, he goes off to face the tail boss, who, much to his surprise, is Liana, all grown up. Suddenly, a bomb inside a doll he traded with Roche explodes, awakening Leighton. It seems like he's returned to reality, but his arm is still cut and bleeding. Asha is also in the room and begs him not to look through her locker, but that only makes him suspicious. He manages to get into the locker and finds a calendar with the dragon blood tree from his visions on it, revealing that he only remembered this tree due to a memory of the past and that New Eden in the Horn of Africa might not be true at all. Confronted with the truth, he suddenly awakens within the real world, while Wilford detects signals calling out from France, indicating that Melanie is possibly still alive. When Ben and Alex tell Leighton of Melanie's possible survival, Leighton becomes suspicious. Knowing that this information is coming from Wilford leaves him skeptical, but he agrees to reroute the train in order to find her. But as they try to follow Melanie's signal, they are led towards a large cloud of toxic gas. Dismayed, Leighton takes Wilford to the bridge and accuses him of betrayal. But oddly enough, Wilford seems shocked, indicating that he had no knowledge of planning behind this. With no way of avoiding the cloud, the train charges quickly into the cloud and the passengers brace for the impact in their cabins. Inside the train, Audrey hypnotizes Till into only focusing on her present self, and Javi does his best to fight through his hallucinations of Wilford's dog to save Sykes from the gas leaking in. Unfortunately, the gas gets into the car containing the crops, contaminating them and ruining Snowpiercer's food supply. Leighton and Asha do their best to close up the vents, but they are unable to reach them with the large size of their hazmat suits. Sacrificing her own life, Asha takes off her suit and closes them before soon dying. At last, Snowpiercer makes it through the gas and another possible signal from Melanie is noticed. On a parallel track, Josie spots Melanie's railcar and brings it onto Snowpiercer with the help of Ben and Leighton. Melanie is inside the car, but she's currently unconscious after depending on suspension drugs for several months. Three days later, she heals with Dr. Peloton's treatments and lovingly reunites with Alex and Ben. Afterwards, she comes to visit Wilford, who apologizes for abandoning her, 
To her, he expresses his doubts about New Eden's existence and believes that keeping the train running should remain as the top priority. Melanie becomes concerned by this as well and goes off to research some data. What's worse is that her research fails to provide a conclusive answer. Despite this, Alex believes that a decision must be made and going off to find New Eden is the best option they have at the moment. In another part of the train, the passengers are preparing for a party celebrating Melanie's return. As this is going on, Leighton tells Josie that he has feelings for her, but she rejects him and urges him to focus on his responsibilities. Through the PA system, Ruth announces that Snowpiercer is passing through the Great Pyramids, which brings much joy to everyone aboard. Abruptly, Melanie takes control of the system and declares that everything about New Eden is a lie. From studying the temperature, she found out that it's still negative 98 degrees in their location. With his allies, Leighton flees to the engine of Big Alice, hoping they can fight back to regain control of the train. Melanie then returns to first class, only to Wilford having poisoned his guards and escaped. With the passengers being split apart between the believers of New Eden and the doubters, a raging conflict begins to storm. All those who still have faith in New Eden's existence join forces with Leighton, while everyone else sides with Melanie or Wilford. Seeing the tension arise fills Melanie with regret, making her feel like she's brought chaos upon Snowpiercer once again. But she stands her ground and reaffirms to everyone that Leighton's beliefs fail to line up with her science. Ruth strongly tries to convince her otherwise, but Melanie is confident that she can control Wilford if she needs to. She then confronts Wilford with a deal to make her the new head engineer. Wilford says he'll only agree if he gets to keep his usual luxuries, and the deal is made. Soon after, Ruth and Lights manage to lure Wilford's new Iceman, Boki, away and knock him out cold, while Leighton, Bess, and Audrey all have Wilford cornered. Among them is Melanie, who joined forces with Leighton in secret and planned the trap alongside him. With Wilford depowered, they force him into Melanie's carriage, where he'll have to survive off her suspension drugs for the rest of his life. To give everyone the freedom to choose, they must decide if they want to stay on Snowpiercer or leave to New Eden. Alex chooses to separate from Melanie and join Leighton. Osweiler chooses New Eden, while Lila chokes to death on her father's eyeball, until Audrey and Ben all remain on Snowpiercer. Miraculously, they arrive in New Eden, which is warm and full of fresh water. Three months later, another signal is shot into the air and is spotted by Melanie.